Hello my friends, I'm Enoch Petroselli, a Mailwitch author and channeler. Today I wanted to make this video and do something a little bit different. I wanted to allow you, my YouTube viewers, to get to know me a little bit better and to understand me a little bit better. Why I follow the left-hand path. What is the left-hand path to me as a person? Why do I think the left-hand path is right for me as an individual? And other miscellaneous information about me that I want to share. So we'll start there. What is the left-hand path to me as a person? I know there's a lot of books out there that define it. My definition is not dissimilar, I don't believe, but there are some specifics about my definition of the left-hand path that I do want to go into. In particular, the fact that the left-hand path to me is understanding that there is a divine source, a divine or unholy even consciousness within the self that is the all consciousness, that is the part of the source of the original source of all consciousness itself. And this is in all things and all people. That's the main piece of my understanding of the left hand path that makes it a worthy path for me and makes it a path that I want to follow. And it's not that I'm judging the right hand path per se. I really don't care, nor do I judge others for their path. The only time I judge another person for what they believe is when they try to force their beliefs on myself, or they try to save my soul from damnation, things like that. So the right-hand path is a, a belief system like Christianity, Islam, for example, there are some examples, like the Bible and the Quran, for example. Mainstream understanding of those religions is that there's an external force, an all-powerful external God, that you must obey without question and have great faith in, that you must worship on a daily basis and make sacrifices to on a daily basis. Whatever that means in that particular religion, whatever the, whatever the dogma of that particular re religion is, it could be morals or ethics, um, like no sex before marriage, for example, no eating pork, um, things like that, obviously. Now, in the left-hand path, the reason it makes sense to me is, like I said, it acknowledges the consciousness within the self that is the all-consciousness, that is the wholeness of all creation. Like a drop in the ocean, a drop in the ocean is the entire ocean, in a manner of speaking. Does that make sense? Like, it's not that the drop of the ocean is separate from the ocean. It could be a drop in the ocean that is merged with the entire ocean. So it's like you're all things all at once. You are an entire individual identity, but also you are the entire universe simultaneously. How does this work in a practical way in spiritual practice and in life? For me as an individual, I work with a lot of spirits and I get advice from those spirits often. However, I draw boundaries with them. I do not let them tell me what to do. I let them give me advice and it resonates or it doesn't. Is it in alignment with me and my will or not? What are my goals? You know, what is my purpose in life? 
if what they're saying brings me closer to that purpose and goal, then yeah, I'll listen to that. I'll take that advice and do my best to follow that advice. However, because there is a divine consciousness within me, I am the all consciousness, a piece of the all consciousness, however you want to look at it. I have sovereignty and I have authority to do my own will. They can't tell me that I absolutely must do this or that because I'm a piece of the whole picture, a thread in the tapestry that is one whole tapestry. Without that thread that is me or you, that tapestry is not whole. So with wholeness consciousness, I acknowledge that in myself and I can and do get advice from spirits or even a being that claims to be the source consciousness itself. If what they're saying does not resonate with me, if I don't feel my, my inner voice in agreement with it, if it makes no sense logically, I can say no and do my own will. I always stay connected to my own will, my own purpose, what I'm trying to accomplish in this life. With all that said, there are levels to acquiring or realizing a wholeness consciousness or wholeness perspective. I've been practicing my path, the left-hand path, for many years. And I've come to a stronger and stronger realization that I'm not separate from any of these ETs, gods, goddesses, any other consciousness that is in the universe or the multiverses. They are within me and I have a wholeness with them. That includes the negative and the positive polarities, for example, light and dark, a family of light, a family of dark. That includes the angelic empire. That includes the Christ consciousness. I believe the Christ consciousness is a real thing. And it also includes the beast, 666. It includes the antichrist consciousness. Now, these are two polar opposites. So how could I have both and work with both, be at peace with both at the same time? Because I'm at that stage of development, I am in the center of the void, if that makes sense. I am the I in the void. For example, the yin and yang symbol, or the symbol of the eye of the dragon. The eye of the dragon is a particular symbol that um, includes two circles, like this. See? I'll, I'll put a photo up so you can see what I'm talking about. The eye of the dragon is two polar opposites, the family of light and the family of dark. And in the center is where you end up. If you follow your path wholeheartedly and you trust your inner guide and your inner will, you will end up in the center. You will end up in the middle the master of both polarities. You are not a slave to either one. You are the master of both. That is the magician. That is the ascended Satanist. That is the left-hand path. Version of enlightenment. 
why do I disagree with the right-hand path? Again, I don't believe the right-hand path can get you to this place because it completely ignores and denies the entire negative polarity of their own psyche, of their own spiritual identity. It severs it and pretends it's not there. Therefore, it controls them and it can never be mastered because they don't acknowledge it, they don't bring it into the light, they don't embrace it. In the right-hand path, you will eventually come to the realization that you need to embrace your shadow, your darkness, and integrate it. How can you do that if you pretend it's not there? If you tell the universe that all negative polarity, all demons, all pagan gods and goddesses are false gods and they don't exist. You disrespect them, you push them away, you hate them, right? Then you can never be whole. You can never have the wholeness perspective. And you can never acknowledge the divinity within yourself. That's the biggest issue with right hand path. There will come a point when you will, you will be seeking God, Allah, Yahweh, Christ, Yeshua. You'll be seeking them wholeheartedly and one day you will realize they are within you. And you will not be able to acknowledge this because your religion tells you that that's not true, that you're being deceived. Even though your instincts your gut tells you it's true, you deny it. Because you've been programmed by those religions since the time you were born, since the time you were indoctrinated into them, for some people. I had that issue, and there was a resolution that was unfavorable and unfortunate. Now I see the wholeness perspective and I embrace it fully. And that's, I guess, all I have to say about that. I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope you can understand me better. For you Christians out there who comment on my channel and hope that I'm saved and you pray to Jesus and God to save me. I can only say that I am saved. I literally have Jesus, God, all them, the entire angelic empire within me. I have all of the family of light and all of the family of darkness within me. I acknowledge them as part of myself. I'm not severing myself, I'm not dividing my consciousness, and that's the way it ends up being. The, the longer you grow spiritually without deciding to let things get in the way, without deciding that dogma needs to be adhered to, uh, you will come to the same conclusion. So with all that said, I do want to talk about who I am as a person as well. I look like to some people that I have no life outside of magic, I would imagine, and that's not true. This is the reason I do a lot of practice is that it is it is my spiritual practice, yes, but it is also my job. I literally make a living doing this. And I, I look at it that way as a means of employment, of gainful employment. But it's not just that, obviously. I am an authentic witch. I am an authentic 
and well-versed magician. I've been practicing for over a decade and I've meditated for hours a day for many years to become able to do the things that I do. Spiritual practice and spiritual skills like mediumship and communication with spirits is something that requires massive discipline to develop or if you already have those gifts to improve them and make them a viable resource to share with others to help others not just yourself i do have other uh, hobbies i'm a bodybuilder uh, non-competitive and maybe someday I'll compete. It's something I really enjoy. I enjoy art. I play guitar. I have a lot of friends that I spend time with. I'm not really the type of person that um, goes out a lot because it's overwhelming for me a lot of the time. I don't go, like, when I say go out, I don't go out dancing, I don't go out to bars. And I don't, it's not that I don't want to, I just, it's like I said, it's a little bit overwhelming for me and it's um, unhealthy to do that all the time anyway, in, from my perspective. I do go to the gym often. I do like to get outside as much as I can. I like to go for walks or hikes and be in nature. I think that's important for anybody, I think that knowing the way broadly is important for somebody who wants to grow spiritually or grow as a person in any way, in any respect. Knowing the way broadly is a term that I believe his name is Miyamoto Musashi. I may be getting his name wrong, but he's a Japanese samurai and he wrote the book of the five rings. And I do want to mention that on the path of removing division from your consciousness, on the path of becoming or having a wholeness perspective, uh, using the left-hand path, it's really important to do healing work. If you can, every day is, is a good way to do it. If you can, when you're meditating, when you're just laying down for like a, a, not a nap, but a meditation, like a 10 to 15 minute meditation where you're laying down, um, you can work on yourself and heal emotional wounds, physical wounds. You can heal your consciousness. That's the biggest piece. Healing the damage done to your consciousness, the division that has been created by trauma in your life. Obviously, I had a lot of work to do in that respect, and I still, to this day, try to take time every day to heal the issues that I had from the time that I was a child, from uh, trauma that I experienced. So with all that said, I want to thank you guys, for those of you who watched this video, and those of you who stuck with me throughout it, even though it may have been uh, different and off topic even compared to my other videos. Uh, I did want to, like I said, I wanted to do something different and allow you to get to know me a little bit better and understand me a little bit better. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos and rituals, channelings, etc. Check out my Patreon for my latest content my occult content, my latest occult-oriented content. And my Patreon also will have any services that I will be offering or that I currently offer. So with all that said, uh, take care. Thank you once again so much for watching. For those of you who have subscribed to my channel and helped me to grow as a creator, a content creator, I appreciate you. Take care.